Hello, welcome back to Man vs Film. We're going to be a review now for uh, Sleepaway Camp 2 Unhappy Campers. Now, if you haven't seen the first movie, I'd suggest stopping this right now because there is going to be a major spoiler for that uh, in this movie because it's part of the storyline. I'm going to have to tell you, and I hate dropping spoilers for movies, I just hate it. But that's the way it's going to have to be to talk about this movie. This is number 17 from the Slasher Classics, came out in 1988, or otherwise known as Nightmare Vacation 2. And in this one, you have something that's very hard to do. They're creating a, a sequel to a movie that was built up on its mystery, built up on who the colour was, and the reveal at the end was rather uh, unusual. And how do you carry that forward? How do you uh, keep that fresh? What they do here is they go full bore tongue in cheek. It is just outlandish. For the sake of being outlandish, it is probably more comedy than it is horror. It pokes fun at the genre, pokes fun at its own movie, and has a rare time doing it. It seems to be a lot of fun, just poking fun at everything else round about it. And it's quite refreshing to see a movie do something like this well before Scream came out, we had Sleepaway Camp 2 and Happy Campers. Now the story is fairly simple, as it is with most of these things. Angela is now a camp counsellor at this summer camp. And she has lost a few things. But one of the things she's not lost is her tendency to murder. And that comes full board this time around. Again, as she starts to eliminate everybody, that is just not a nice person. <laughs> that is enough. That is all she needs to take somebody out. And they do it in a form of various ways. Um, whether it be drill, whether it be knife, or a garrote, or barbecue. She will take these people out in various ways, shapes, and form. And has a lot of fun doing it. We get the character of Angela, who is this really chipper, cheery, happy, always smiling, smiling kind of character. Who just wants people to be nice and have a lot of fun at camp. But people aren't like that. People like to push buttons. People like to go off to the woods to have sex or to drink or to do drugs or to do whatever things that Angela deems not right and she sends them home, which is code for murder them in a gruesome fashion, which they do show you several times throughout this movie. It doesn't shy away from it. It's, it's fun, silly gore where there is lashings of blood all over the place and it is a movie that is all about fun. There's no mystery here, you know who the killer is within the first couple of moments of the movie and you know that it's just a case of her working her way through every other person in the movie. And it does that. And it does it with a hell of a lot of gusto. It really does just charge into that kind of uh, movie that it wants to be and, and succeeds. Now I could have seen this really ruffling a lot of feathers when it came out because it is nothing like the original other than taking a character from there and, and escalating the situation and making it far different. And I think it deserves a lot of credit for doing that because it takes something that was straight, steadfast, twists into something completely different and it succeeds at being that completely different thing. Now it's up to you whether this is the kind of movie for you because the production standards for me weren't as solid as they were in the first one. But then the movie is more playful, it's more fun and it feels more like a movie. Lots of kills, lots of fun times. There is even, in the hour mark I think it is, a montage of all the kills that have happened up until then, just in case you weren't getting enough blood and guts and gore in this movie. And it's just so funny. It's just so playful. You can't help but be infected by this really good, uh, better than should be sequel to a movie that is quite um, renowned in the slasher genre. I don't know if Sleepaway Camp 2 is as renowned, but it should be. It breaks boundaries. It does things that are unexpected, especially at that time frame. Poking fun at itself, poking fun at the genre it is in, poking fun at the uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. It has people dress up as those characters and kill or be killed the way those characters would kill people in their movies. It has just so much fun. 
you don't go into this movie for the scares. This is the kind of movie that you have beers, a group of horror fans, some pizza, and you just chill out, laugh your head off, poke fun, and give running commentary to the silliness that you're seeing on screen. I had a great deal of fun with Sleepaway Camp 2. I've got to say, it's a movie that I didn't really get the first time I watched it, which is down to me. Yeah, but seeing it now, uh, I, I grew really more appreciative for it. I think it's a movie that's well worth checking out. Of course, I do love the Slasher Classics collection. It's another one that I, I, I'm happy to have in the collection, and I am really looking forward to going on to part three, which I remember absolutely nothing about. That should be fun. I'd love to know your opinion on Sleepaway Camp 2 and Happy Campers. Let me know in the comment box below, and I will see you next time on Man vs. Film.